Hi everyone. Today's story is The Return of the Buffaloes. Uh, this is a history story that um, goes with our unit on the Native Americans that we started before school closed. We will have a craft that goes along with this in a separate video next. Um, so this is called The Return of the Buffaloes by Paul Galdone. And one thing I found interesting and that we would have talked about in class was that um, for the people of the plains, the buffalo was a great gift from God and supplied everything that they needed. Their flesh to eat, robes to wear, skins to cover their teepees, and even dung to burn on the uh, largely treeless plains. And this wonderful relationship always existed. But occasionally the herds wandered to faraway places, and then there was terrible famine, which means no food. Um, and it, it's a theme that appears in a lot of their stories, uh, in their mythology. Uh, so this is a story about that. And you can take a, picture, a note here of these beautiful designs and um, try to find them on every page. And they are what are will be used, um, what they used to make what we're going to make a craft of. Ah, here's the craft. Um, this just kind of shows generally that they make um, a special um, container called a par flesh and uh, they decorate it with these beautiful designs um, on the outside. Here's a little look at what um, we're going to make. Okay, I'll get back to that page. Keep an eye out for the designs on each page. Spring had come, but the buffaloes had not returned, and grass was even growing in the plains they always used. The winter supplies of dried meat had all been eaten, and the par fleshes were empty. Everyone was hungry, and the children were too weak to go out and play any longer. Women broke up old bones to boil with leaves and roots for soup. The people were starving. Where have the buffaloes gone, everyone asked. No one knew. Even the deer and elk were nowhere to be found. Day after day, hunters went out searching. People waited, yet at evening, the hunters always came back empty-handed. Young men kept a lookout on the hilltops, always hoping to see the buffalo herds. People who had spoken with animals in their dreams gathered at the center of the camp. Deer and elk and buffalo dreamers made ceremonies and danced, calling the animals to come back. People watched and joined in with their thoughts, knowing that the mystic dreamers felt a close kinship with the animals. The animals would know that their two-legged relatives were calling them to come back. Everyday hunters walked afar, searching, always hoping to bring back something to eat. Finally, everyone was weak and without hope to take down the teepees and walk farther. The leaders of the village chose two young men and told them, You boys are still strong. Most of us are weak or old, and you can hear the children always crying for something to eat. We now rely on your strength. You must find the buffaloes. Go to those high hills, climb to the tops, and look out over the country, and come back when you have found the buffaloes. Try hard. We all put our hopes in you. When the young men reached the hills, they climbed up through the pine tree forests and clambered up the rocks at the very top. They looked for the four corners of the world. They hoped to see the buffalo herds making the plains black with their numbers, but they could not see even one. I think we will die together here, one of the scouts said. These rocks will mark our burying place. They told us not to go home until we found the buffaloes. You are right, the other answered. I did 
so want to tell something good to make my parents smile again. As they walked among the hilltops, suddenly they smelled buffaloes. They were amazed to find hoof prints everywhere around the entrance to a cave. While they puzzled, a voice said, I will feed your people. At a distance stood a woman, mysterious and wonderful to look at. Her hair was tied with sage leaves and buffalo hair. Her dress was painted red in a manner they had never seen. As they looked, they saw that the hill was really a teepee and the cave its door. The woman led them inside and sat them down on either side of her. Grandmother, our people are starving, they told her. Why have you not come sooner, grandsons, she asked. Why have you gone hungry for so long? Suddenly she pointed, look this way, and for an instant they glimpsed animals of every kind. Look over there, she said, pointing in the opposite direction, and for a moment the teepee appeared black with stampeding buffaloes. I will give you all these, grandsons, she told them. I will feed your people and make them ha happy. Tell them I will send out my buffalo people now. Go now. The young man ran down to the plains. Now they had marvelous words to take home. I will feed your people and make them happy, she had told them. They did not feel weak or hungry or tired any longer. When they came inside of their village again, they started to sing and run a crooked course from side to side, which was a signal that they had something important to report. Great was everyone's joy and excitement. We will go and see this wonderful woman. The wise ones decided, let us each take her a gift. The two young men led the way up to the cave and all the people climbed up after them. Those who were strong carried the children and helped the weaker ones. On the ground at the entrance to the cave, women spread out buff beautiful buffalo robes which they had painted. People placed their gifts on the robes. Even the children gave their dolls or toys and those who had none gave pretty stones or flowers. They waited, nobody spoke, even the camp dogs sat quietly. When the mysterious woman did not appear, they all walked back to their teepees. The sun went down, and again the children went to sleep without anything to eat. And then during the night everyone was awakened by a thunderstorm drumming and booming in the hills. When the sound grew louder, they rushed outside and hammered in the pegs around the bottoms of the teepees and closed the smoke flaps against the storm. Yet there was no lightning, even no wind, and the sky was full of stars. The rumbling swelled to a terrifying roar, and the ground under their feet trembled. It's the Buffalo Nation, they cried. The buffaloes are coming. All through the night they came out of the cave, surging like a torrent down from the hills and rushing past the teepees. The air was filled with noises of snorting and bellowing and thundering hoofs. People crouched inside their teepees, hiding under their robes. The mothers held their children close, fearful that the buffaloes would knock down the teepees and trample them in their frantic rush. The huge beasts raced past, crowding one upon another. Those who were brave enough to peep through holes in the teepee covers became dizzy watching the multitudes hurrying by. As the sun arose, the teepee doors were thrown open. The wonderful woman had brought back the buffaloes. It was just as she had promised the young men. After that, the hunters went out and brought home meat. There was laughter again and delicious cooking 
smells came from every teepee. Wise men gave thanks for the food and everyone had enough to eat. Even the dogs and magpies were happy. Later they sliced the rest of the meat to dry in the sun and the parfleshes were filled once again. That is the story the old people used to tell about those long ago days. The end. Okay, stay tuned for the next video, which will be a craft relating to this uh, book.